Hi guys, welcome to Macho Chemistry. In today's video, I will be making some isopropyl nitride because I want to see if it really makes this really nice white flame and I need it for some future projects. Anyway, the chemicals needed for this experiment are quite simple and all that I am going to need is 19 ml of 35% hydrochloric acid, 17 ml of 99% isopropyl alcohol, 13.8 grams of sodium nitride and some distilled water. The concentrations here are not that important, so you can adjust them if you need. Before I start this experiment, I need to note that sometimes nitrates and nitrides can get mistaken for one another, while in reality they are completely different things. With that out of the way, now I need to prepare for the experiment. The reaction of making isopropyl nitride is very exothermic, which means that it releases a lot of heat, which in turn completely destroys your end product. I learned it the hard way, so to avoid making this mistake again, I put the hydrochloric acid and isopropanol in the freezer and chilled them to about negative 6 degrees Celsius. When they were cold, it was time to measure them out. To do that, I got a graduated cylinder and filled it with 17 ml of isopropanol followed by 19 ml of hydrochloric acid. One thing to remember is that the isopropanol has such high vapor pressure that it squirts out of almost every pipette, so it needs to be poured directly from the bottle. After the ingredients were measured out, I diluted the mixture with about 20 ml of distilled water. The water is not necessary, but after some trial and error, I found out that it really helps to manage the temperature. Also guys, never pour water directly in through concentrated acid, and instead do it the other way around. Here it is not a problem, since the hydrochloric acid is already a 34% solution in water. After combining the ingredients, I poured them into a beaker in an ice bath with stirring. The ice bath and stirring are not necessary, but again, the reaction works much better with them. The last thing that I need to make the isopropyl nitride is a sodium nitride solution. To make it, I dissolved 13.8 grams of sodium nitride in about 50 ml of distilled water. Sodium nitride dissolves very easily in water and it also cools the water down because its dissolvent is endothermic. When the solution was ready, I transferred it into a separate panel above the alcohol acid mixture. I of course forgot to close the valve and some of the sodium nitride solution managed to escape, but in the end everything was okay. After all of the solution was added, I lightly opened the valve and let the nitride solution slowly drip into the isopropanol HCl1. Again, this can be done much quicker and easier by just pouring the isopropanol HCl mixture into the nitride solution in the separatory funnel, but doing this slowly and in an ice bath significantly increases the yield. Now that this is slowly reacting, let's talk a little bit about what is going on in there. It isn't too complicated and basically the sodium nitride reacts with the hydrochloric acid, producing nitrous acid and sodium chloride. Then, the nitrous acid reacts with the isopropanol, forming isopropyl nitride and water. And since isopropyl nitride is an ester, meaning that it has a carbon to oxygen bond, it can easily get hydrolyzed by the water and acid present in the reaction, destroying it and producing toxic nitrogen dioxide gas. Here you have an example of that. As you can see, the addition of sodium nitrate solution results in some bubbling and the funnel starts to fill up with nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas. This gas can also be generated by the decomposition of the unstable nitrous acid and this is why this reaction has to be carried out in a fume hood or outside. To mitigate the ester hydrolysis, this reaction is carried out in cold temperatures with an excess of sodium nitrite to destroy the remaining hydrochloric acid, which also lowers the rate of decomposition. 
After the nitride solution addition was done, I turned off the steering and as you can see, the mixture separated into two layers. The upper one is the isopropyl nitride, which kinda looks like pee. To separate it, I put the entire mixture into a separatory panel and slowly drain the water layer. After that, I poured all of the isopropyl nitride into a bottle. I could do an additional washing step, but I was too lazy and decided not to. My yield was around 9 grams, which wasn't a lot, but enough to do what I wanted. And speaking of that, I saw a lot of people get these wonderful white flames while burning isopropyl nitride, so I had to give it a try. When I ignited it, it didn't work and looked like just a normal flame. I mean, there was some light in there, but I thought that I can do better. In the second attempt, I ignited the isopropyl nitride in a very small container, because I thought that a smaller flame would result in a more white color. I was kind of right, because there was certainly more white in there, but I wanted to do even better. For my third attempt, I got a piece of ceramic that I used to build my new fume hood, because I thought that it would allow the nitride to spread more, resulting in a smaller flame. It worked only partially, and the result wasn't too great. At this point, I have run out of ideas to try, and started suspecting that the orange flame color was from some kind of sodium impurity that was dissolved in the isopropyl nitride, because I didn't do the washing step. Anyway, while the flame test wasn't too spectacular, now let's move on to other applications of azopropyl nitride. A long time ago, it was used as an antiseptic and a medication for high blood pressure, but was phased out due to tons of negative side effects. However, it doesn't have uses only in medicine, but also in chemistry as a precursor to some very useful chemicals, like for example azides. It also has a nice property of being a very good solvent for many substances. For example, here I have some silicone paste, and as you know, it is not dissolved by many things. But if I get some isopropyl nitride onto it, it immediately dissolves, and I think that this is pretty cool. After playing with the isopropyl nitride, I wanted to store it for a long time, and to do that, I prepared a vial with some sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride to trap the remaining acids and water to prevent the ester hydrolysis. Anyway, thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you liked the video, and see you in the next one.